we talked about gateways as an, a way of implementing IPFS in HTTP. Um, and how does uh, the IPFS implementation targeted to end, end users look like? Um, suddenly, you don't need to worry about a lot of technical things. Um, so this talk will be kind of like an evolution. It's, I, I'm omitting a lot of uh, historical context, but just giving you a, a, a taste of the arc we are on. And maybe some things that we could discuss this week, uh, some food uh, for thought uh, around uh, user interfaces, the way you expose IPFS uh, to end users. Um, I'll go over our browser extension history, uh, our desktop application, how they work together, and then why Brave is very, very special, uh, and what's next around um, IPFS in uh, user applications. So, a uh, Firefox extension happened on March 2015. I know because I looked at the first commit. Um, and it was only Firefox extension. And over time, uh, it added support for Chrome and Chromium-based browsers, and it got renamed to IPFS Companion. And now it's a browser extension which has over 60,000 uh, users in uh, Chrome Web Store alone. Um, and it is a browser extension which you, you click the blog button, you install it in your browser. It does not have to be brave. Specifically, if it's not brave, you want companion. Um, and it gives you this uh, icon in the address bar uh, with additional interface related to IPFS. So what companion does, it automatically detects IPFS resources, and by IPFS resources, I mean anything that's content address on the web. It could be URL, it could be DNS link website, which has a valid TXT records. And by default, if you have locally running HTTP gateway, or if you set up some remote gateway, uh, it will block that request from hitting that remote server, and instead it will resolve the content using your local node. So it's an opportunistic upgrade to IPFS in a browser which doesn't even support IPFS. Um, it provides user interface for frequently used IPFS actions. You can copy shareable link to something that's already on IPFS, or you could uh, mirror assets from websites, import them to your own node, node will start providing that to the network. You could copy CIDs, or you could even uh, import a file from a local file system. So it's a nice utility. But uh, this utility talks uh, with Kubo over RPC, and it uses Gateway, uh, which is running on your local host, which means you have this very nice user interface. And in the other window, you, you got this. So, so that's uh, why we also have IPFS desktop application. It's one of the reasons. But, uh, uh, it's a desktop application for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Um, you install it, and you are presented with a user interface with the state of your node. Uh, if you are connected to the network, how many peers are you connected to? It gives you a, a user interface which replaces the command line. And that brings, uh, makes IPFS more approachable to people. Um, the application itself, aside from providing the user interface, it orchestrates Kubo daemon. So uh, if you, when you install IPFS desktop, it automatically will install the daemon, and it will orchestrate it for you. It will auto-update when there's a new version. It will start, stop when you start or exit a desktop application. And you are able to uh, go to the user interface directly from your menu bar or tray. Um, and the interface itself, it's uh, our, our exploration of uh, sh converting uh, low-level concepts like MFS or maybe local or remote pinning um, into an interface that's digestible to regular users, reusing existing uh, mental models and uh, interface patterns, for example, MFS, it's represented as regular file system. You can add more free files. Uh, you are able to uh, 
context click on an item and explore a specific DAG. If it's a big file, you, you are able to explore all the blocks inside of it. Um, you can see what peers you are connected to, what are prevalent connections. When we introduced Quick, it was really fun to see like months, months later seeing more and more uh, peers uh, supporting Quick. Um, so we have a browser extension and we have a desktop application. Um, and you need to install both to have the full experience. So if you want to have the centralized website to load uh, from your local IPFS node, you install Companion, it will say, hey, I need desktop application, you install desktop application, and then you are in the final state. So can we do better? I'd argue we do better, and the well, Companion is one implementation of IPFS, which relies on uh, delegating uh, resolution to the gateway desktop implements the gateway, uh, some, some su subset of IPFS for the uh, use in the browser to Companion. And Brave is like a, somehow an implementation which is synthesis of both. Um, so in last year, uh, Brave announced uh, native support for IPFS. And what I mean by native, it's not just uh, support for IPFS console slash addresses or pre-installing IPFS companion. Uh, what we mean by, by that is that when you use uh, IPFS resource for a first time, uh, Brave will prompt you and ask you, hey, do you want to enable local IPFS daemon? Should Brave uh, take care of it and run it for you? And if you enable it, uh, you, you essentially are done because you are able to paste the address and it magically resolves through the gateway provided by Kubo because Brave internally, uh, at least right now, because there's nothing better, wink, wink, uh, uh, it runs Kubo gateway. It will automatically update it uh, for you just like uh, IPFS desktop does. But it's just a component. There's for sure a better implementation with lower uh, per performance impact, lower CPU usage, and so on. But the coolest thing in Brave is that the protocol stays in the address bar. And if the protocol stays in the address bar, that's a clear indicator that you're like using IPFS natively. Uh, you, you are able to delegate resolution to a public gateway, but you don't, uh, you don't need to. You can run your own node. Uh, and this is like a very powerful story because now instead of asking people, hey, install IPFS Companion on this browser extension and install this desktop application, you need to run like both. You just say, hey, install Brave. Open this IPN IPNS address or IPFS CAD address. And that's it. You, the user onboarding suddenly got collapsed into two lines. Um, and it's, it, it may so not sound like much, but it is really, really a lot because uh, Brave is uh, more than doubling the, uh, the monthly active user base year to year. 2021, it was over 50 million. We are in the middle of 2022, uh, just saying. Um, and that means uh, our, the content addressed data, the addresses that don't have location can now resolve out of the box for more than 50 million of users. So uh, it, I, I'd argue that's like pretty uh, popular IPFS implementation in, in running in the production. Um, so browser extension, desktop application, Brave. What's next in this space? Um, I'm not sure if I'm over time, so I'll quit, just briefly uh, signal what's uh, on our short, mid and short roadmap, and what I'm happy to discuss uh, and workshop this week. Um, Brave Mobile, like no, the mobile browsers have challenges, and now that we have trustless gateways, and trustless gateway retrieval is possible, the mobile web browsers are able to support uh, uh, content address data natively without running full peer-to-peer -peer stack. They may, could still use it as a fallback mechanism, but, but the default, which does not drain battery, could be now gateways or a pool of gateways. 
um, IPFS companion rewrite, we have to rewrite it because of reasons. Uh, but it's a good opportunity because now, oh, maybe if we have the service worker, which is a part of Manifest V3, maybe we could also leverage the, this uh, trustless retrieval inside of companion. Uh, and that means that even if you don't have desktop, you don't have Brave, you prefer a different browser, maybe you still can have trustless retrieval in the just extension. Uh, writable protocol handlers based on the writable gateways. It's a discussion we are having late, later this week. I mentioned that before. Uh, Agregor is paving the path for that. Hopefully, we'll establish something that other browsers like Brave can implement. Um, and then, like mounting uh, immutable assets, mutable uh, local file systems in a way that's native to the system. We are exploring things like WebDAV or maybe like OS specific. Uh, uh, additions to desktop or standalone applications, which give this like native feel, being able to just interact with, uh, j just like uh, on the HTTP, the good API is no API, it like disappears. Uh, similarly, if you, we are able to like expose IPF content address resources uh, using the abstractions right there in operating systems, in like uh, Windows Explorer or Mac OS Finder, uh, without any special uh, interface like Web UI, that would be great. And, having multiple IPFS nodes on your machine may become the problem. So figuring a way for GUI applications to like share or delegate, routing, uh, networking, uh, that's a bit longer, longer term, but also happy to discuss that. Uh, yeah, thanks.